Can looks good. Who was your uh, Who's your favorite ar- favorite artist? Like all time? Sure. Because it's definitely changes. I've gotten older. Okay. Who's Who's your Who's your favorite artist now? And or band. I don't know. I feel like I'm all over the place. I feel like I listen to a lot of stuff. I don't really have a favorite. It's kind of shady. Dylan? <laughs> it's kind of shady. That's kind of bullshit. Who's your favorite band? Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm all over the place. I don't really have a favorite band right now. Kind of shady. That's <laughs> shady as shit, dude. Why don't we start a band and we could be the favorite band? Okay, well, let's ask Dane. Dylan? Wait, let's, Dane, let's your both fa- guess what? Dane's favorite artist. Big, what is what's his name? Big Papa X, X Plug. <laughs> <laughs> what? Big Papa. I don't even know, but X-plug. I do like. Dude, I like Dane's D- easy. No, it's Dane's is definitely Drake. No, it's Mike Stud. Well, yeah, it's one hundred percent Mike. Yeah, Mike Stud, Drake, and then Big X the plug. Big X the plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, he's good. Uh, Texas, dude. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you you saved it, didn't you? Fuck yeah, I saved it. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he knows it. Dude, I got some new Jeezy on here too. That's awesome. Dude, what happened so, to these old rappers? Why did I didn't know that Gorilla Zo, Young Jock, Jeezy's come back? Like, let's go, dude. Yeah. Did you know G- Jeezy was Young Jeezy? Yeah. He now pulled, he's just he rebranded. He's not, he's not young. young anymore. Nor is he Lil. He started little. Became young, <laughs> and now he's just regular. <laughs> Why would he just be old Jeezy then? Uh, it's O L apostrophe. Oh, old oh, Jeezy. Old Jeezy. <laughs> that should be a tight, tight. Yeah, dude, these are these are hits. Yeah. It's funny because like the kids nowadays are still listening to that stuff that we listened to when we were in high school. Yeah, I feel like I don't know. Eminem for me is like up there as a favorite artist, but I don't like listen to it daily. Definitely don't listen to it daily, and it's, it's, that's like one of those things where like I know so many of his songs by heart, and like what's your okay? You're you're about to hit a lift. Okay. You just cracked open a Viper Energy. What song are you going to to get pumped up? I'm a Barbie girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I I'll be honest. I'm probably I would qualify like on uh on like a list is probably like a psychopath. Sometimes I listen to audiobooks while I lift. I don't even listen to music, yeah. Dude, get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> this just got awkward. <laughs> <laughs> you could have lied. No. no. The most monotone voice reading a book. Yeah. Just pounding out 225. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? I mean, it's 325 now, but... I bet. <laughs> What's yours? My go-to right now? Uh, It's pretty raw, but... Dude, Little Baby... Listen to Little yeah. Baby's right little, on. Little Baby's got some good stuff. Baby. Post Malone has to be like an all-time favorite of mine. Post like Malone's every good. every fucking track. Yeah. And he covers like all spectrums of like emotions and stuff like that. There's like hype ones. You know, there's like you, more serious ones. Are you one of the people that like if you're in a sad mood, do you listen to sad music? I think I just make... listen to sad music all the time regardless. <laughs> Is that I mean, when you got everything you own is in a box to the left. That's yeah. pretty fucking depressing. <laughs> right? Sad Sam? Yeah. That's why you always. <laughs> <laughs> what do you listen to driving? I actually <laughs> gonna get judged pretty hard here. Sometimes I just turn off music. I, no, I, that's no, that's normal. <laughs> no, seriously, it's definitely not normal. I don't. I, I, I do too. So like, do I. I just get. I've had like it's a couple of realizations, like as I've gotten older, that like sometimes I'm just putting on like music to distract myself. And so, like, rather than just putting on, like, music or an audiobook, I'll just, like, sit in silence and, like, be with whatever I'm thinking about, which is... That is good, because especially if you're on your, on your way home, I notice when you listen to a podcast and you're learning stuff, like, you want to get to action right away, mm-hmm. but sometimes you just want to shut off. Yeah. So that's where either having nothing on or just a literally a stupid podcast... That's just kind of yeah, dumb noise sometimes in the background. Something that's like entertainment is like it's still worth something, but I don't know. I find myself asking like more and more, like what's, like why am I bothering with this? Like, right. you know. And then if I if I don't want to listen, I just shut it off and I just right. fucking sit in silence and listen to the sound of my uh, 2019 Tacoma. Tacoma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screaming. The taco tires. Taco tires on the <laughs> just pavement. Just slapping. <laughs> 
cheese flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that almost sounds like it could be a country song. Taco yeah, tires taco on the pavement. Tires, cheese on the pavement. Taco tires on the brocoma. Yeah. So I don't know. That's uh that's my like listening routine. I honestly have a, a really of, wide variety. I listen to Speaking of bands. Everything. Speaking of bands, we possibly have so do you know yet that we we might have a party? Like bands like stacks of cash? Like so big that you need rubber bands? No. Okay. I wish. Not yet. Definitely like, not. Definitely. We have the rubber bands, but there's nothing in between, <laughs> you know. <laughs> definitely premature purchase. Not. No, it, we want to have a party. Okay. Out in the Viper, Viper parking lot. And we're looking at bringing on what was it called? Uh, this little band called Metallica. <laughs> have you ever heard of them? <laughs> no, not really. It sounds like sounds like a glam band, like like Metallic. Yeah, yeah mainly covers. Smoke songs. Road. Okay. Smoke Road. They're a local band. They're okay. growing. Yeah, he's actually going to come on the podcast August first. Okay, Dylan. He's he's pretty cool. Oh, nice. Dude, we got two Dylans here. D- One's enough. It's gonna be wild. Yeah, it's pretty wild. We got a lot of Chris's around here too, but that's sick. So smoke old. Old Smoke Road? Smoke Road? Smoke, smoke Road. Okay. Yeah. They get pissed if you get it wrong, too. Oh, shit. <laughs> Especially if your name is Sam. Smoke Road. Smoke road. And, and you I have it like on the inside of my hand. And you drive a white Tacoma. Oh, fuck. Dude, he's not going to no, like so me. We want to have a summer party here. Okay. Um, Where we'd have like a car show, a band, music, games, food, detailing events, welding events. And Burnouts. Burnout pit. Damn. First, we we nominated you to be the first one in the Tacoma. Burn those taco tires off. Yeah, there's there's new tires. <laughs> Burn those taco yeah. tires. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam. I love it. <laughs> it's like six taco. I'd probably be able to do it. So far, I don't think I would have been able to do it in the Jeep, but I think I could do a burnout in the Tacoma. So uh, I don't believe it. I don't Dude, believe I can it. just turn on a, a rear locking diff. And then I can drift. Then I can drift in a Tacoma. I think that diff lock. Yeah. Damn, that's pretty cool. It's sick. That's pretty it's sick. really sick. Does it have front front lockers too? No, just rear. Almost. But yeah, I know. You had to pay extra for that in the Jeep, and it just came came with the Tacoma. So it's pretty sweet. You liking this so far? Yeah. Your Jeep like had lockers too. No. The par wagon had all four lockers. What? Yeah. Damn. Would lock all four tires. She's a beast. That's wild. Four low in that thing was low. <laughs> you like, could crawl out anything. A rock crawler. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of crawling, Alex sent me over a. <laughs> <laughs> Alex just won't learn to walk. No. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, that's well, not what I was doing. Kenzie yet. and I were listening to our podcast driving the other day. Every podcast we have, Alex comes up and. <laughs> oh, fuck. Sorry, Alex. Not Dude, he's got to come on here because. I think he was only on a few of them. People don't know who real Al is yet. We got to get him on. I know. <laughs> he just started walking. <laughs> All right. No, speak, he just sent me over like a brand, um, a brand that does like uh, Tacoma off-road like accessories or something. And he's like, come up with a, a couple cool ideas, and I'll pitch it at him. So I gotta, nice. I gotta do some like R and D or just researching. Like, Why, how does crawling? How, where they call it like rock crawling? Oh. So, gotcha. Yeah, I was a little little lost there yeah. on that one. I thought it was a good segue, but apparently not. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, anyways is not a word. No, there's multiple options. To your rock crawling? Wait, what? No, anyways. Like, there's multiple options. Like, not anyway. Anyway. Anyways is a, is not a word. Ways. Is ways a word? Ways is an app. Ways with a Z. W A Y S. There's a few ways to go. Done. That's fine. Then it's a word. You just said it wasn't a word, Dylan. A few ways? Anyway, any ways is not a word. No, it's two separate words. Oh, you're not using it as a, any comp- ways. As a compound word. Well, you kind yeah. of said it as one. Anyways is not a word. How do you how do you know what how I phrased it? There was it was there was a hyphen in between, Dane. I'm googling it. Non standard form the, non-standard form of anyway. 
informal, typically used by people that Im- do not know how to speak English. Duh, Dylan, see, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> Primarily full togs. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> I didn't get a degree in English, I'll tell you that right now. We'll be straightforward about that one. <laughs> All right, it. Sam. Let's hit it. Hit it. This is the podcast. Welcome to episode 13. Holy shit. Yeah, dude, really? swinging away. We want, let's have, uh, I want to have our dad on it. This is a quarter of the year, isn't it? 13 is a quarter of 50. No, I guess it'd be 50. I just thought, I'm right, like I said, I don't do math. So English and math, that's yeah. like a no-go. So like 26, 52, yeah, quarter of the year, right? 13, 26, 52, yeah, yeah. we're good. I was yeah. right. I, I don't I don't doubt that. Quarter of the year. Um, no, I want to have... Let's start having some more guests on here. All right. Our dad, he wants to come on. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Uh, that one, we should actually start drinking a beer early. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier the better. <laughs> we should have a few beers on that one. That'd be fun. All right. Dylan from Smoke Road. Um, there's a few other local people that I want to ha- have on it also. Okay. Yeah, we haven't really had any guests yet other than Dylan, and I guess Chris was on one. Does that really count as a guest, though? Not really. I mean, because they're here in the office. Yeah. What, do, what would you like to be qualified as, Dylan? <laughs> it's not a guest. <laughs> so for anyone listening, we did just launch our affiliate program. It is called the Viper Elite Program. It is a three-tier program where you can essentially join the team and – Collaborate with like-minded people. Dude, it's going so good so far. There's 75 people in the Viper League Pro. Yeah, Alex said the chat is huge. It's insane. Constant huge. updating of like what people are doing, the goals that they're hitting, and we separate it into two different categories. One is more of like the lifestyle mm-hmm. gym goers. The other is more of the automotive um, gearhead style people, and it's been great. People are sharing pictures of their cars, what they're working on, drinking Viper Energy. This group over here is showing bodybuilding competitions, lifting, mm-hmm. like what what workouts they're doing. Dude, it's the coolest thing, and people love it too. The the amount of like shares on the energy, like Viper Energy story, is like wild. It is. Like, there's 1,500 followers on the page, but there's got to be like way more people out there because, like the I don't right. know, the amount seems like like crazy. Especially that last video you just shared, oh, that, that, one that workout really one. Good. That yeah. one popped off like yeah. 70 some comments on it. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. That was pretty sick. But if you're listening and you're somebody that, that's a go-getter that wants to join the team in some way, maybe it's not full-time paid, but you want to be a part of something that is growing and going to be big, sign up for an f- affiliate program. Um, it's like-minded people, go-getters, killers. Not everyone's accepted also. Uh, you do have to qualify for it by presenting, um, by at least being somebody that shows that you want to achieve bigger things than what you're currently doing. So you go on viperenergy.com, fill out, fill out our affiliate program link, and we'll love to have you a part of the team because it is an awesome program. Dylan, are you an affiliate yet? I'm not. I was denied. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did Alex deny you? You get, So that's a great point. If you do get denied, you can resubmit once you tweak your application a little bit better. Yeah, I'm just going to lie on the next one. So I'll get it for sure. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Edit that part out. <laughs> no, don't cut that part out. You heard it here. You he heard said it right. He's, he's lying to get in. One of the owners was denied. That is how strict it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Maybe next time. I'll get there one day. Yeah, at least you have like a source of Viper Energy still. Like a constant flow. Constant. How, Dane, how many cans do you think you've had in the last 30 days? Three a day. Three a day? Three a day. Holy shit. One one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one at like 4 p.m. Okay. Wow. Damn. That's a lot. But that's the thing is I don't – like it's not a massive – you don't get the jitters. Or oh, and like your, never. Yeah. I don't get anxiety from it. <clears throat> it's actually sustainable energy to where it's – I'm what – like – I, lo- I don't know. I have to, every morning I have to crack one. And then when I get here, I have to crack one. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about it. it. Tastes so good. I just crave the tasting. But yeah, about three a day. Damn. Not recommended for people to drink three a day. Just saying that's what I do. Mm-hmm. 
Do you want to know how many I have yes. a day? One to two. One to two. Same. Yeah. Usually, usually around one. I start with like three. A I won't be able to sleep at night. Yeah. And then usually I have one of these at work, <clears throat> just because like I hit like <clears throat> noon or one o'clock and I'm like. <gasps> one thing I do notice though is, after drinking these, I am in a much better mood. So that is one thing that L-theanine has been studied and proven to help is L-theanine. Like a mood elevation? Yeah, it, it can help people improve their mood and help improve their stress. And I can honestly say, like, after hmm. drinking these, I do feel that. I do feel Damn. in a better mood. I don't know if it's... It's almost like smoking a J. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can put that in there. Actually, I think that's on the can. Contains... Uh, only the purest T- marijuana ingredients. THC. <laughs> no, no, there is a, no THC in There here. is no THC in my brand. Do they make THC drinks? Yeah. Do they really? Yeah. I would assume so. There's no way it tastes good because no, the it's, stuff it's, doesn't it's smell CB, good anyways. It's like CBD. Okay. So they put CBD in it, which is, I don't know, not really a weed expert, but I'm pretty sure okay. it's similar or has similar effects. But it's legal? I think so, to a okay. certain certain limit. I mean, if you don't get caught, <laughs> everything's legal if you don't get caught. Dylan is throwing out some really wild advice this podcast. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Have fun, Brent, editing this one. Yeah. yeah. Alex is going to be listening to this just like cutting around it. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, uh, and Dylan talked here. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot say that. But let's. Uh, I've always been a questionable character. What did we talk about last time? <clears throat> last, last podcast we we left off on you and I. Yep. And it we was were the talking Roman pyramids. No, you <laughs> missed the you Roman, missed one. I know. I did Romans had pyramids too. According to Professor Alex, yeah. Oh, shit. So, uh, you and I talked about still the beginning stages. It wasn't really necessarily a ton on the business side of things of what mm-hmm. happened at Viper. It was more of just a lot of coaching. Um, but we can pick it up where we essentially left off last time is just the beginning stages of where we're at at, at the old facility. And well, we talked about that. You guys talked about all the way the transition into the Yeah, we were. We believe facility. we left off. We were coming here. Yeah. We just finished the, the big um, thousand chair order. That we were doing here, and we shipped out the Air Force order from here. That's where we yeah, left off. Yeah, um, you guys split the warehouse right away, right, initially? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we I shared, remember hearing about that. Yeah, we shared this facility with another company Yeah, that was moving out. And that was tough for a while, I mean, because you got other employees that are not yours mm-hmm. walking around your facility, and they, were, they ran two shifts, so they were here when we weren't here, right, which always has uh, inherent concern, but... Mm-hmm. We we had a good relationship with the owner and management, so we felt we felt pretty good about it. But actually, one of our first warehouse guy, or one of our main warehouse guys came from that company. <laughs> He's a rock star. So shout out to Jacob. Yeah, yeah we should have him on here sometime. <clears throat> yeah, because he I don't know if he spotted it early on or just wanted to be a part of it, but like I don't know. I love the saying when we're like, yeah, he just came with a he came with the building, like he. <laughs> He was part of the rent. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know. Like, uh, to to be so early on, and then like just for him to realize that like, oh, like this company might be growing, or I, you know, I know he's had conversations with you about it before, but it'd be actually interesting to find out. Like, we shoot an episode where we, it's just one episode, but we have uh, multiple sit downs. Yeah, yeah. We'll have Jake, Jacob in here, Drake in here, Levi in here. And those are pretty much the three. Because they they were all really early on. Warehouse. Yeah. Like the first in the warehouse. It'd be cool to have them on. But yeah. You know, I remember those guys when, like, it was the end of the day and we were, like, cleaning up and stuff. And they're like, hey, you want us to sweep over there? <laughs> and we're like, sure. And they, like, quick ran and grabbed rooms. They <laughs> swept our whole area and everything. They're like, how does it look good? I'm like, yeah, dude. Like, they were, you know, yeah. Yeah. trying to, I don't know, huh? either Impressive. get out of their current work. Yeah. area or show us that they were, really had a lot of interest you know huh i just well, was funny it we, always stuck with me we came in and jacob was working on on the line and he it's something about it where people can see from the outside of how fun it looks to work here and that was after one of his shifts he comes up he, and he tells me that he's like we're moving out 
And he's like, I, I like it. It's okay. But he's like, I'm kind of bored. I see what you guys are doing. And I want to hop on something young. And the main thing that stuck with me that Jacob asked was, is there room to grow? And if I work hard, can I level up? And that was one of the coolest things. And right then and there, it was essentially you're hired. Is it just like something inherently interesting about like a young company or like the possibility for opportunity that you think people, you know, jump at? Yeah, I think I think it's <clears throat> getting out of a corporate environment where, well, one one major thing he told me that <clears throat> he's like I, I've never seen our CEO or boss, never never even talked to him, and yeah, he said I don't even think he knows what I what I look like or yeah. who I what what my name is. And I think that's one part of it is people want to feel like they're part, they're of, something. part of something and that mm -hmm. they're known and that their work or what they're working towards is actually shown and improving the company. We're in the corporate, hmm. but not to say it, some, some corporations, I'm sure they have a great work environment, but you kind of, it becomes where you're a number at some point mm -hmm. and you don't know what you're working towards and you don't see the bigger, bigger purpose of what you're doing day to day and how it's impacting. And as you see here, it's, it's every day something's changing mm -hmm. or the work that we've done in the past six months to a year is now coming to life into what we're doing right now. Yeah. And everybody here is a part of it. Not a single person here is not a part of, you know, where we are going and where we got to, which is which I think that is the biggest thing. People see that like, I want to be a part of that. I want to have my hands in what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's a fair way to look at it. Gosh, I sure. can't end a conversation without saying, you know, it's a Wisconsin thing. Is it? it I know. It, I always it, say, no, I'm saying it could be I silent. Hate I hate it. It could <laughs> like, be silent. It's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't I mean, think people, people who are outside of the Midwest don't get like the Midwest goodbye, which is essentially, you know, <laughs> but like while you're standing at the door for 20 minutes, like, <laughs> well, so, <yeah>. something about <laughs> Wisconsin. Uh, I gotta get going. <laughs> hey, did I tell you about the, just like that video, uh, Brent and Mitchell, when they were at the, the racetrack? The guy, that old guy tries it. The conversation, he tries it like, mm, that's good. Like a second goes by. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like yeah. Wisconsinites have to end something with either a, oh, yeah, a, you know, mm -hmm. or oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Don't even have to do anything with it. It's just I don't like, know when I – I remember when somebody told me I did that and, like – I would just, I remember realizing I say that shit all the time, like in a grocery store when you can't quite get past somebody and you're like, excuse, uh, oh, let me just squeeze right past you. Right. Oh, sorry. Let me sneak past you. It's yeah. funny when Alex first started coming up here, he's like, you guys have a weird accent, you know? And we're like, there, I just, I just did it again. And I don't <laughs> even know I'm doing it. Now you're going to hear it. I don't even know I'm doing it. Like now I heard him like, shit. But he's like, you guys have a really weird accent. And I'm like... I guess so. I mean, I know we always sounded like. Oh, you wanted to say it there. You wanted to say it there. No, not yet. But it's coming. I can feel it. it's like creeping its way up. <laughs> you just like we can't talk help like Canadians, it. but then Alex comes up here, and he, you can tell as he stays here oh, longer, yeah. he slowly yeah. adapts the he's Wisconsin had, accent. He's had it's weekends hilarious. or weeks that he's here for, I don't know, seven days or something like that, and at the end he's, oh, he's and, full blown Wisconsin. You know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another thing Wisconsin I say is, yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. I mean, it's okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was a natural one. We're that fucked. was a natural We're one. We're so fucked. Uh, I'm trying. At the end of this podcast, We're be talking Brent, so just slow super clip it. <laughs> no. And all the you know is just stitch them all can together. He, like, dig <laughs> can you like dig them like one, two? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ding, he, we, can ding, ding. we can put a counter up. We can put a counter up. Dude, we got to be at like 100 already. <laughs> yeah. A hundred. It's, it's welcome tough. to the you know cast. Oh. It's tough, but uh, but yeah, I, I I think that's what it is when people see a company, especially a newer one, they want to be a part of something and feel involved in it. I mean, what drew you here when you first? Because you were the first cam, you were the first uh, so media I guy, I guess, that we hired. And when you came on, it was first photog. Yeah, photog. <laughs> You say one Ever thing since you said guys, that, it yeah. just like I stuck to it, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, I love it. But like, well, there the team was what we probably had 
five people, four people in the office when you started. Yeah. So, I mean, like, what was what drew what drew you to to Viper? We had we had six, but it, people actually working probably five. <laughs> Is that like at me or no. I don't understand? Oh, then, yeah, <laughs> no, he's like then, staring at me like. No, inside. So like three then. Oh. Like three actually working. Yeah. Or like two. People here, but only a few actually working. <laughs> um, what drew me? Probably the opportunity to do something that I really enjoyed rather than – because I've done it in other settings before and just never really found the right combination, but of – both balance and free time, um, but also creativity and how do you say I, I don't know like the right way to say it. So balance between creativity and the mandatory tasks, like reshooting all the product pictures, like there's no creativity in that. You know, mm-hmm. that's like just work that has to yeah. be done. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought it would be a better balance between the two of them and being the first person in the chain sort of like of our media team, I was like, Okay, well, no one's really going to – I'll get direction, but no one's really going to tell me what I have to do at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You know, that's – well, like, there's Alex, so, you know, I still know that. But um, I don't know. So I think that was the primary – like, just the opportunity to do more of what I enjoyed doing, mm-hmm. I guess, was the primary draw. Um, Has it lived out to be what you expected? Oh, but, yeah, it's far exceeded that. Hell yeah. Like far exceeded That's that. That's awesome. So especially I'm, I've been kind of like a, I do this stuff in my free time too. Yeah. So like coming off of doing it all the time to begin with and then like adding it, like adding and doing it full time, there was never like a lack of like creativity and like granted any creative person knows you sort of go through like waves on like what inspires you, like what doesn't sometimes you right. just have to do stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't think there was ever like a. You never you. I don't think you hit. A, I don't think you ever hit a slump, or, mm. or like a low point. Uh, like there's times where I find it more difficult to like create sure. stuff, or like but maybe it's not. It <clears throat> it's probably not easy to see from a naked eye. I'm sure you see it, but for oh, us, yeah. it, it's well, there's, impossible to see a difference. I'll spend days like looking for songs, and it's like fuck, dude. There's like. Like, all these suck. Like, none of these fit the vibe. And then there's some days where it's, like, every other song. And it's, like, I don't get how that works. I'm got still it. figuring that out. If you ever need songs, we got to make one of Jeezy. Old, I'm old down Jeezy? for that. No, no Street just Cred. G- yeah. Street Cred by Jeezy. Just Put screenshot that stuff that and send them that to it, me. Those, his hip-hop songs are, like, super entrepreneurial. They are. Like, if you really listen to the lyrics and what he's talking about, like, it's like to the T, like yeah. especially street cred. Yeah. If listen to the lyrics sometime. Talks it's, about how he <clears throat> manages his money while selling selling drugs. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. really <laughs> I got an account on the book. Not only that, but he's no, it, yeah. no, it's like I can't feed my my family from street cred, you know, yeah. buy a phantom and a nine eleven with street cred. Like yeah. basically he's saying street cred's fucking stupid. Like mm-hmm. yeah. he's going for big picture stuff. That's yeah. basically what the I don't song think is he's, about. I, I don't think he's in in big into that drug and he, he's a different artist where he doesn't rap about like killing people and drugs and this and that. He's more like you said on the entrepreneur, big lifestyle, big picture. Yeah. See, that's actually music. why like part of the reason that like has drawn me to Post Malone even more is none of his music videos are like super exploitative of women. Yeah. Like at all. Like no. it's fun cars and like him doing cool shit, and it's like he he like never like rubs it in your face to the point where you're like, all right, dude, like, chill out. Like, right. That That is one thing. With Little Baby and all those guys, it's so – it's almost dark. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And you listen to the lyrics, and it's just like, do I really want this being put into my head? You know? I get that. I mean, some of my lifting songs are pretty dark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, out of all of us here, I think Dylan listens to the – Probably the darkest. Yeah. Yeah, but I just like it. I just like it because it gets me going. It's not like I live and breathe that by that stuff, you know. And they don't either. It's just, it's music. You, know? you don't put Brantley to bed to it. No, but if you want like to go the, to bed, like the accountant, the accountant. You watch that movie? Yeah, with Ben Affleck. Yeah, when he of course puts the strobe lights on and loud music. Yeah, but he's like, <laughs> you ever watch that? No. Oh, dude, you have to watch the accountant. He One has of the like best a form of ever. high functioning autism. 
that's not the purpose I'm getting at. I'm yeah, but he uh, needs the stimulation. Like that's what soothes him, I guess. I was just making a comparison. Is really all I was doing. Yeah, but I mean, I can <laughs> whoop people's ass and fucking crunch numbers like nobody else. If that's <laughs> what you're getting at, <laughs> just like him. <laughs> what other? I just watched another movie about the stock market crash that one of the guys, the Little Big Short. Yeah, the Big Short. He, one of the trade, the first trader. He listened. I think actually, I think he's got autis- autism too, and he listens to loud music. Huh. While that's his form of concentration. So just fun fact. If you I gotta show you guys this it. meme too, by the way. I don't know if you've ever seen like Monsters University. Oh, she has to be eyes. <laughs> that, dude, that shit's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> It felt relevant. There's okay. Seeing we're on topic, there's another one where that pet one where they listen to music. That poodle listens to music once yeah. when the owner like leaves. It just starts fucking yeah. headbanging. It's hilarious. Those movies are oddly entertaining. They are those kid movies. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know. I don't even know if they're kid. I feel like they're. Almost but as like a kid, there's no movie. way you would have gotten that. No. Right. You'd be like, like why isn't so, she listening to something else? They're approaching it great because they're targeting. It, they're making it. Interesting for a kid to watch and a parent to watch because always, as a parent when you're watching a kid's movie typically it's like oh my gosh this is <laughs> terrible yeah where this is you can at least get some sort of entertainment or joy from it mm-hmm. Ooh, I almost said it I almost said it it's oh did you really almost said it can so we is get it like a back of your head now uh, to yes, not say it I have to bite my tongue that's okay if I start now you know there it is <laughs> God, I felt so good. <laughs> Oh, I had this, to get one, out. this is hilarious. Yeah, this was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Oh shit. I love metal though. We can talk about metal for the rest of this podcast if you want. Just saying. But yeah, I mean Guess not. Fuck um, me, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> but a massive political answer to your first question. I think it's part of people want to be a part of something, put in symbol. They want to feel like their time is being put into something that is actually pushing the company forward and is noticed by mm-hmm. um, the entire team, essentially. Yeah. Well, wouldn't you? I mean, you want to you want to be a part of something that has purpose, right? You just don't want to go to something every day where you spend a third of your day at and doesn't fucking mean anything. Like, right. I, that sounds terrible to me. Well, that's – you and I always talked about it whenever mm. – especially in Wisconsin. Uh, not just Wisconsin. I'm sure it's all over this country. But peop, especially older entrepreneurs will always say, I can't find employees. I can't find talent. I can't find this. But they never look at themselves and – Yeah, the culture. The culture of where I mean, they're it working. Is, it is, you know? it is def- still definitely tough to find good quality people, though. It, it is, really but, is. Like – you, but you have to look at would you want to work at these places too? Absolutely. No culture. For boss sure. is gone. That's almost impossible. You know, especially golfing. if you've been working at a business for as long as like you know th- for thirty years. Like how do yeah. you how do you take a step back and look at it from like you know somebody's younger perspective? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, <laughs> you had two of them there. I, now I'm thinking of Brett do the little college. He had two you know. <laughs> Dude, you know that? I didn't even catch it. Oh, yeah. I'm immune to it. You know? (laughs) Yeah, you know? That dinger, that culture is going to be. Oh, we're probably at 100. Fuck. Uh, (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) What can I say? Yeah. How do Do you I talk now? (laughs) (laughs) I can't say, you know? Or, oh, or. Don't even know the number of times I say like because that's going to be the roof. But. Yeah, when we moved in, that was, I would say finding, I mean, we talked about it before a little bit, but finding employees was difficult, but we're starting to see it become <clears throat> easier as we grow, and people are starting to see us on social media, and just essentially word of mouth even, mm-hmm. of, hey, this is a new, young, upcoming company, and an awesome place to work for. Yeah, it's, I mean, now we're starting to gain a little, some credibility, right? So, like, in the beginning when it was just Dane and I and, you know, Drake and Levi and just a few people, you essentially have to gain their trust. You know what I mean? Like, y- instead of you interviewing them, 
you know, they're almost interviewing you because like you need workers, right? You need mm -hmm. somebody to come work for you and help. Mm -hmm. But like, you're so young, you have nothing to fall back on. Like you're only a year and a half into this. Like, why would somebody take, take the risk with you? You know, it's so, like you have to, you're almost selling them on why they should work for you, you know, because yeah. God damn it, I said it. And then it just like locked up my train of thought. Let's just, just, like, let's just, keep, right. let's just okay. keep moving past. Here's a, here's a follow-up question. Okay. As we continue to grow, how, how do you keep that mentality, you know? Keep, keep the mentality of... Of we're still a young company. Like as you continue I, to age and become more mature, and like you said, now people find some credibility, how do we continue to have that so that younger people or people who are ambitious still see it as an opportunity and not too late to grow in a company or grow with a company. Yeah, I think it's I think it's keeping um, your core val values at the center at all times, no matter what stage of the company and making sure that we still allow for fun, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, dude, I can't do this. <laughs> I know it's hard. To it all right, we're it's like move. planted in my head now. Can just we just all agree to say uh, it? Yes. <laughs> Can we have a tr uh, you know, truce? Yes. <laughs> all right. No, but it really comes down to making – we have to make this place fun. And as we continue to grow, we'll have more finances to be able to invest in a better building or better offices or better culture or – better equipment out there. So you start mm -hmm. to see, wow, this place is not just a young company anymore. They actually have legit stuff and it's a great place to work. We have better benefits. We have um, systems in place to where it's not complete chaos. Mm -hmm. and so you almost take corporate, you do have to, corporate structure is good in some areas of systemizing and setting up processes. Agreed. But when you- But what are those processes correct. and systems you're setting up? Right? When you get too are they limiting people or are they helping people? Are people standing in their packaging line peeing in a bottle because they they have a five minute bathroom break? Yeah, like Amazon or they are they? Minutes? No, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> five minutes is a lot. <laughs> Takes you five minutes to pee. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you're standing sure. over the top of my shoulder watching. You should I, probably get that checked out. I think it 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 also comes down to. Um, continually investing in that age. your core management group and making sure that they're always holding the standard, making sure that they're allowing for creativity, making sure they're allowing for their team to continue to grow as well. Um, because if you, if you hinder that creativity and say, Hey, this is how we do it. Then people are going to lose fulfillment because they can't bring themselves to the company. Mm -hmm. So Alex talks about it all the time. You have a different style. Brent has a different style, mm -hmm. but you both make great content and both of those styles fit our brand. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's essentially what we need to allow in everything. So salesmen, every salesman we bring in is going to have a different style of selling, mm -hmm. but there's a core structure that you need to follow. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So as we grow, it's, it's allowing people to bring their unique characteristics to the organization, but still staying within our procedures and systems. So when is it appropriate? Like, when do you realize that something is working, but it could be done better? And how do you allow employees to step in and point that out? Because I think that especially as companies continue to grow and you put those the systems in place, sometimes I think those systems get developed in a way that it's easiest right then, you know, but as somebody, mm -hmm. If somebody coming in from the outside can see it slightly differently. Systems will always change. They will. And they got to be created by somebody that's done it before. You can't have an outside person come in and create a system that they've never part partook in, right, mm -hmm. to solve the problem. Yep, because they don't know well They don't enough. know what goes into it. Yeah. Right? You got to have somebody that's been in the trenches that's done it before and that knows where the problem areas are to help create the system. Mm -hmm. Right. When I, when I speak a system – you can overdo it with systems and procedures. You can have too many systems to where it's inconvenient, it's cumbersome, it's confusing to anybody new that comes in. But to give you an example, think of how awesome a system would be is if you had documentation of, hey, this is how you edit a podcast. Mm -hmm. These, however many steps, this is exactly how you do it. I don't want any deviation from there because then we get the same result every single time. 
So now let's say you have a team of 10 people and we get a new podcast hire. You can give them that system and say, hey, this is how we do it. And go through the checklist so that they can complete it almost without any hand-holding. Right. So that's where systems are great. Also of checklists for shoots or um, you guys go to an event, having checklists for that, simplified systems of that sort. Mm -hmm. Where if you overdo it of, hey, you need to say this, 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 and this, when this happens, it's going to become – there's no way you're going to be able to follow it. Mm -hmm. There needs to be some sort – there, you need to allow for some sort of deviation. Yeah, I know. I definitely know what you mean because one thing that I find more and more as we continue to go out and shoot is every time you work with somebody, they know somebody. And I realize I've probably been missing out on opportunities by just asking, mm-hmm. hey, do you have a friend who would be interested in this, right? And you can get a phone number almost on the spot. Every time. And like I haven't been doing that, you know, right. up until recently and now it's like, all right, every time I finish, ask for one contact that this person knows and if they enjoy working with us, hopefully they're willing to give us another contact. Yeah. But it can be difficult to start remembering those things unless you jot them down, you know, unless you put them somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, for yourself to remember. Right. And for other people. So, but I mean, to create a place that people want to continue to no matter how big you get, I think it also comes down to what we what we put in place. How active are we? Uh, we live by the we live by the the trait of um, we never want to become the people where we're never here mm-hmm. because then that's where I I truly feel the <clears throat> morality goes down where people are just like what am I what am I doing this for? Mm-hmm. What are we fighting for? Because the people that that brought it up aren't even here anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I want to have a daily presence every single day to show that, hey, we're still fighting for this no matter how big we get. Mm-hmm. Because once you remove the core people and they don't show face anymore, you start to lose a lot of motivation here of, okay, well, I don't really know the point of this anymore. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a, that plays a massive factor in the companies that are massive right now versus the companies that had an opportunity but then – Sort of down. Fell so off. like we can, we could talk about. I won't say the name, but the company. Mm-hmm. You can bleep it, but yeah, where and they expanded too quickly. Yeah, well, yeah, they expanded too quickly. They got a ton of money in, and then the founders just took their money and ran, yeah. and it just went right down. Morale went down. People quit. They hired too many people. They fired pretty much half their squad. So you can quickly see how it can mm-hmm. go in the reverse way where that company could have been 10x where they are right now. Oh yeah, for sure. If if and it cor- probably could have been saved if they if right. they were still there and they would have seen it they could have avoided the iceberg, mm-hmm. you right. know, but they weren't there. So, they and, never saw they never saw it coming. They couldn't react. Right. And they're still big. <clears throat> they're, they're still a big organization. I just think it could have been much bigger. Yeah. And much of a cooler place to work, especially around here in Wisconsin. Like there aren't a ton of cool places to work around here. Not th- I, I'm seeing that from my standpoint. I haven't been in mm-hmm. the corporate work environment. I'm sure there's some great organizations around here, but um, like a young startup company like ourselves. No, there's not. You know? There's a lot of older businesses that have been around for a long time, and obviously, um, ones in like long the long term sustainable ones. You know, yeah, ones they, in manufacturing or one like Georgia Pacific or. Like any of those, those are like the big ones that are going to obviously last a while, right? But if you want to work for a new company, it's not that often that stuff pops up like Viper. Maybe you get restaurants, yeah. right? But how how sustainable is restaurants? You know, that could be debated, but um, yeah. you see a lot of them pop up and then close, you know, a couple of years later or whatever. Um, so yeah, restaurants definitely, are tough. yeah. Oh, without a doubt. I mean... But again, it comes down to management. How, what makes you different than every every other restaurant or bar, or your pricing, your food, your chefs, your service. Mm-hmm. There's so much factors that play into it, just like us, just like every other company. How's your customer service? How's your packaging? How's your product? How's your website? See, and even you know? like with a restaurant, location matters. You know, are you in a good spot where it's accessible? Like, can people right. get to you easily? Do they want to come to that neighborhood? Like, all that plays yeah. into account. Like in you know yeah, especially right. in the restaurant setting but flipping it on on your end what would make you <clears throat> in a growing company like this what would make you want to continue to stay 
you know, like what would make you want to continue to push your skill set and your level of video and photo and editing and feel almost like yeah, motivated, uh, you know what I'm saying? From an, from an employee standpoint, I guess creativity for me, it would be like more creative options, mm -hmm. I guess, you know, or moving up in that tier. I add another one to the fucking checklist, Brent. Damn it. <laughs> um, I see you. If you were to call it out, I would have. I, no, I didn't I even know. Like it. I said, I'm immune to it. Yeah. No, I'm thinking about it too much, but just more creative opportunities, you know, that's <laughs> Dude, that one was hard. <laughs> you just said it. Fuck. I'm that, was so a that was a natural one too. <laughs> oh, oh in the wild. I like I took a whole hard pause. That and was then a pause. Said, yeah. And yeah. Then no. was <laughs> right after he said it too. <laughs> so um just the creative opportunities to do more unique stuff in the terms of branding and in marketing. Yeah. So But he said it right there. Opportunity. That's mm -hmm. what everybody wants. Mm -hmm. Right? When it boils down to it. And I think most creative people want to continue to grow their skill set. Mm -hmm. So continuing to do stuff that is out of the regular and stuff that is more unique to a shoot or try to a different idea that you saw, or I haven't gone out, we haven't done like a rolling car shoot yet. Mm -hmm. You know, how it would apply, I, I'm not 100% sure, but the opportunity would be cool and I could see it fitting in. So maybe one day in the future to be able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. That would be a big one for me. We can make that work. I have two guys at the gym that I met that got the, uh, <clears throat> what is that, camera stand that attaches to the front of a car. Yeah. We can make that There's work a on lot the highway. Them, yeah, it'd be sick. Dude. It'd be really sick. I mean, honestly, to tie it into anything, you just have somebody driving a nice car drinking a Viper Energy, and it's pretty sick. Yeah. With a Viper I think the license the opportunity played. with uh, Austin from the warehouse doing some, like, drifting. You're freaking, and... you're a uh, muffler of blow the... Audio on, on the freaking microphone. That was a tough sentence. <laughs> Struggled there. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm trying not to say like and you know and oh yeah and I can't pretty much say <laughs> anything without thinking about it first. So I, I do want to make a point of you and I talked about it a little bit. The advice we're giving now could potentially change in the future. Mm hmm. The advice we're giving now is from what we've experienced and the stage that we're at. Mm -hmm. I never want to give bad advice, you know, or uneducated advice. I think it's based really, off of experience. So I think I just, it's important for everybody, especially people listening, to understand that not everybody that you hear advice from is applicable to yeah. like your life. And so we might say stuff that does not apply, but we might also say stuff that gives you a new insight. So yeah. especially when you listen to, you know, the After Hours podcast or any other podcast that people might listen to, it's important to consider. And this is something like that hit me really hard as I started getting older is I would take anybody's advice. Mm -hmm. Now I don't take anybody's advice unless they are a place that I want to go or they have something to offer me, which I find super valuable. Yeah. yeah. Is so it some bullshit meme you see on Instagram and you're not going to no, live by that? No, I'm just going to send that to you. Yeah. <laughs> What you're just saying of taking advice from people that you don't want to be in that life. Isn't that the school system? To some degree, think about it, for to sure. Some yeah. degree? I mean, so I, I do relate it to <clears throat> like finance class and uh, investments class. Mm -hmm. And we're going down a, we're going down a slippery road here. <laughs> you want me, if you want to start diving into that. <laughs> Let's dig deep. Yeah. Just no, go, but, go but for it. you are, uh, you're being preached on how to become rich. Not to say these guys aren't rich, mm -hmm. but I mean, even Andy talks about it. You see them walk out in the parking lot and they're driving a Toyota. See, that's where I completely disagree. I think the school system is training you to be the opposite, to not become rich. Everything no, right. is successful. That's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Everything they're putting in your brains, they're, they're, they're hindering you from becoming that. Right. That's what you I'm know? saying. Like, Man, I said it. Do you I just know, but going. you could have you could have just blew by that one and just say ding even. every time you say it now. I know Dane had two in there before and he didn't even know. I know. It's just, <laughs> it's just what it is, man. It's 
it's hard not to say it, you no. know. <laughs> but but it is I'm true. Sorry. It's it's just sad that the school system. I don't know. You just waste so much time. There's a lot of and general money. knowledge, and I'll I never look at it, look back on it, and feel like I wasted my time. Granted, I went to a tech school, so fortunately, I didn't yeah. burn four to eight years at a you know state university. Yeah, um, but I also. <laughs> We have, to, we have to be like exceptionally. Brent, we might have to cut off some of this shit. <laughs> yeah, it's freaking people who do that are. Yeah. That's no, why I, I know, said we're we getting have, on a slippery slope with this education we system. Have, we have maybe some maybe working partners that we should maybe. Stepping on some toes yeah, here. That's that what I mean. Should, we're, we're not stepping on toes. Kind of. No, actually, I know, but I, like. I'm saying. Like right up the road. A, it's and, not every college. I agree, and it's, it's also not every it's, college. It's, it's it, how people use it, right? At the end of the day, if that in for like if you are passionate about the information that's being taught and you find a way to work that into your career then it's useful so okay let, let's twist this then all right this is this is very fair and this is we might have to gut part of this but that's fine go ahead but uh, if you are going through a four-year two-year six-year eight-year university whether it's tech or non or state university state university or private whatever you are learning and whoever you are learning it from, take that information in, but do not allow it to hinder what you want out of life. That's very fair to say. Yeah, of course. absolutely. You know, and sometimes you don't get the best teachers. That's very fair also. Sometimes mm -hmm. teachers do have, feel like they have a higher authority because they are a teacher. They have mm -hmm. that status. And sometimes people think that their shit doesn't stink, but it's sometimes the information that they're feeding is complete garbage. Yeah. So it really comes down to being mindful of the information you're taking in. If you're already committed to a four year or two year, just keep going through it, but don't allow it to hinder what mm -hmm. you truly want out of life. Plain and simple. Yeah. If you're super passionate about the thing that you're learning as well, by the way, there are so many people get into the workforce as quickly as possible because you will learn more on the job yeah. or, being, if you like being an accountant, sit over somebody's shoulder at a local business and say, like, I want to help. Mm -hmm. You know, how can I, can I sort paperwork? Can you show me what you do? Anything along those lines. Yeah. And get that experience because you're going to learn quicker on the job than you will from a book. Right. And some people do learn quick from a book, but your day in, like day to day sometimes doesn't qualify as like, you know, remembering the economic charts from 1982 or whatever mm -hmm. it is so well I will, I will say school did help in ways of uh excel like excel spreadsheets we took a class for that and it definitely helped finance did definitely help as well uh accounting helped in a broad knowledge you don't become experts in all these but you at least have a broad knowledge and understanding mm -hmm. of the flow and structure of it i will mm -hmm. say that whether it's worth four years of my life for debate, mm -hmm. whether it's worth how much money it is to go to UW Oshkosh, all for debate, you know. But you can never really take it back. See, and I would, I would give the advice that all those math classes that that we had to spend time in didn't help. But like you do engineering, so for some people it does. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the tricky part. Is I mean, some you have to learn some stuff. Yeah, you know, you can't. Some stuff you can't be taught on the job. You have to be. It has to be taught to you in a classroom setting. Mm -hmm. Which is I, fine. I can agree some with that stuff, as well. Yeah. Some of this, that's how it needs to be done, right? But I think what what they're teaching is the problem, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know? You had two in there, but we'll, we'll ignore the first one. Yeah, it's fine. But, yeah, it's just be mindful. That's so it. So what do you think and somebody could do to somebody who's in a four-year university or at a two-year tech school or somebody looking to go into it? How can they get their money's worth? How can they, you know, how can they do everything they need to in order to get on that career path with good momentum? I say what you said is get on the job, get on the job, do an internship, you get paid for it, and you're learning what. So, the quicker you learn about what you want to go to, the quicker 
you'll learn if it's right for you or not. Mm -hmm. I see so many people after three years switch their degree and they go for something for another four years. Mm -hmm. That's the most, it's so sad because not only are you wasting more time and money, but like you completely just wasted three years Mm -hmm. and now you're making a complete switch. So before, even when you're literally be seven years behind now. Yeah. So even when you're in in your gen eds, like if you want to be, I don't know, somebody in, on Wall Street, find somebody nearby that you know that can at least you can sit next to while while they do trades, mm-hmm. or watch people on on YouTube or whatever it may be. But dive in deep before you think that job is right for you, because last thing you want is to go through all this schooling, all this tuition, and then you get on the job and a year later you hate your freaking life. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you hate the the job that you're doing. I learned a lot in in this position that I didn't know going into it. And I'm more grateful now that I actually know that stuff yeah. than if, cause videos are one of those things where you can just make a video, mm-hmm. but does it apply to the product? Does it help with marketing? Does it actually yeah. at the end of the day get sales? And if you're just making cool, fun videos, you know, you're not really generating any sales, but yeah, there's, there's stuff to be learned that even after like me finishing a, a two-year degree, I didn't know. And it's only once you get on the job that sometimes those things click. Well, there you go. That's a great point too. With, with any, I guess any job or any um, courses, they're ever evolving. Mm-hmm. They never stop. So unless that teacher is con- – how is – I guess my question is how is that teacher – how do you know if that teacher – is learning all that new stuff so especially in in camera in order to learn that yeah you could watch videos but the really way that you learn the ins and outs of it is doing it Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so if you're picking it up and practicing so like if you're learning from somebody that does camera but hasn't picked up a camera in two years a lot of shit changed in two years with Mm -hmm. editing and and camera and photo so be careful who you're getting your information from too uh, if they're actually in it day to day yeah, I agree. So, that's kind of what I think. Oh, shit. Did you break it? No. What do you think, Dylan? Um, I have no comment on the school system. He's like... I'm setting this one out. He's well, like... Can I cut Dylan, it what do you think? It's bad. Mm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a... What's the sound of that? Is that like something burning up over there? <laughs> you just can't wait to <laughs> see it. Is there... <laughs> <It's like purple. laughs> it's like uh you ever watch the office when he can't say that's what she said yeah <laughs> <He pulls up. laughs> do you ever see that <laughs> uh anyways so yeah i think that if you i think if you know what you want to do or if you don't know what you want to do i think it's still really important to get into a, a workspace and try out that career or try out that like a direction and then figure out if it's worth going to school for it. Yeah. Maybe that would be the the better way to approach it. Which is what high school should be. So high school should be preparation of you looking, what's, what's your interest kind of steer yourself into the direction direction of what you want to do for, I don't want to say the rest of your life because some people have a lot of career changes, which Mm -hmm. is fine. But like, what do you want to start out doing? Mm -hmm. That's what high school should be. And I feel like it's really, it's not that. It isn't. <clears throat> so uh, Dylan was kind of quiet before, and I, uh, I think we just turned the dial up now to like eleven. Like shaking. Yeah. He sh- My energy's <laughs> gone. So you know, on our seats we have the double rub rating. Yeah. The dude rubbed through it already with his freaking legs. <laughs> what? I could see. I could see the foam. No, I didn't. <laughs> He's wearing it sandpaper. Was, it pants. withstood my shaking. Double rub rating. What's yeah. That? So. When you're when you're testing a material, they have it's called a double rub rating. So they have something that slides back and forth, okay. and it'll count how many times it rubs the surface before it punctures, and that essentially shows how durable so it is. So only two rubs <laughs> for Dylan's. It's a double rub. <laughs> if it's only double rub rated, that's two back no, one rub, two rub. No double rub rating. So it'd be rated. It's got. 10,000 double rubs or 6,000 yeah, double rubs. Yeah, but Sam is asking what the double is. That's both directions, forward, backwards. That's, right, that's, that's one a rub, rub. That's a double rub. That's a that's a rub. Okay, so he's asking where the double comes from. 
The double right? is one rub, one rub. That's double rub. That's what he that's said. That's one rub. So, but if you said double it's, rubs it's, are one rub, you said it's double rub rated. This is probably going to be cut like, too because this is probably not true. Like, it's got to be like ten thousand double rub well, rated. We're not going to have a podcast then. <laughs> <laughs> Right. We, uh, we, cut this. Um, cut from uh, two minutes we, in. We to... fully disclose that we are not professionals in anything. No. We are just talking. This is a source of talking. Yeah, I might have to review this one, but it's fine. <laughs> cool. Well, we might as well just reshoot another one. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's good. Double rub rated, huh? I didn't even know that was a thing. Now he's googling it. No, I'm not. <laughs> what do they rub it with? How much pressure do they use? It's going to make another shitty joke, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised it took that long. Nothing. It's fine. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. All right. That's all I got. Well, would you like to uh, run us out with a little Viper Energy affiliate thing? We did an affiliate thing at the beginning. Yeah, we did talk, an affiliate let's thing. Let's talk about the product. We'll talk quick about the product. So Viper Energy is now available on our website, viperenergy.com. Quick little health benefits to it. There's no artificial ingredients in here. It has all nine essential amino acids, and it has some vitamins and essential minerals. Um, it is probably one of the best tasting energy drinks I've ever had. It's clean. It doesn't affect my blood sugar, being a type 1 diabetic. It is a great drink. I highly suggest you guys checking it out. Also, we made this drink for you to trust with ingredients that you can trust, unlike others on the market today. Uh, we did just launch our affiliate program also. It's a three-tier program. Highly suggest you guys taking a look at it. Great opportunity to get involved in Viper and the ecosystem that we're building. Really appreciate you, appreciate you guys listening. And that's all I got. You know. All right, bye. You know. <laughs> <laughs>